We all make mistakes and with kiteboarding, it's actually one of the best ways to improve as long as you learn from your mistakes. In my videos, I often try to include the most common mistakes and try to replicate them to my best effort. Unfortunately, that's not the same as making a real mistake. And that is exactly where this video is going to be different. We are going to look at videos from some of my students and the real mistakes they made. And then I'll provide you with the same tips I gave to them. Before we start reviewing these videos, I just want to make one thing clear. These riders are trying to improve their level and are always with one foot or toe outside of their comfort zone. This is an approach where you end up crashing a lot and you try to learn from your mistakes. This is the same approach as many professionals, including myself, use to improve our riding skills and post tricks on our social media feeds. Often, we don't include the X amount of crashes that we had to endure to get these tricks so stylish and controlled. Feel free to post and comment about these videos, but please keep your comments constructive. And let's start with the classic jump. Probably the first trick you'll try and the one you'll never end up perfecting. In this video from Colt, you can see that he has a very nice takeoff with a good carve, but something seems to go wrong on the landing. This is due to his kite steering during the jump. You can see that he steers the kite hard to the right at the apex, which results in a kite that drops him towards the water. He lands correct, but now his kite is flying through the wind window, putting him down a bit harder and faster than anticipated. Kite steering is very important during the jump and essential if you want to have a soft landing. The kite provides most lift when it's around 12 o'clock. So when you steer a kite over to the side, this can result in a sudden drop. But this doesn't mean that steering a kite back and forth around 12 is the best, as this increases your, for your forward or downwind speed, making for less lift and a kite that puts you down harder. Try to make slow and simple moves with your kite, as you can see in these videos from Colt and Dave. This becomes a bit harder when the winds are strong and you're riding small kites. Kaylee is doing a very good job to keep her 5 meter kite under control during this jump, but you can see that there is additional steering movement. In this video from Dave, you can see that he has a good takeoff and kite steering, but on the landing his board is perpendicular to his moving direction. The result is a board that skips over the water and makes it hard to keep balance. You can also see that on the landing from this bigger jump, but here he manages to correct and ride it out. So what's the takeaway? Point your board in the direction that you are moving. Most of the time this is a downwind direction, as you can see demonstrated very nicely by Dave in this particular video. Like that the board will slice through the water resulting in a very controlled landing. For a full breakdown on the perfect jump, you can have a look at this SA Masterclass video, but I'll also include those videos in the description below. Mm. During a classic jump, you want to make slow steering movements with the kite above your head. But with a forward sand jump, we do the opposite, sending the kite forward in the wind window. In this video, you can see the end result from Nathan after a practice session. It wasn't all smooth sailing though, as the timing for the down loop or heli loop actually changes with the height of the jump and the amount of forward sand that you add. Here you can see that Nathan jumps a bit higher and doesn't let the kite recover to a position above his head. Instead, he loops the kite a bit too early, which results in a lot of forward pull and a crash. The hardest part about any down loop or heli loop is probably the timing and the position of the kite. It's super important that the kite flies behind you or at least above you before you pull the loop. When the kite is in front, it will always generate a lot of power and pull you forward instead of up. Do you want to practice the forward send jump, but not really ready to pull a loop yet? Then do exactly that. You can practice the kite steering from a forward send jump and just leave the loop out in the end. 
You probably won't be able to ride it out as the kite needs to go back into the wind window, but at least you can practice the kite maneuvers and positioning and feeling of the forward send jump. Just remember to point that board downwind on your landing as you have more forward and downwind speed. The kite loop is often on the list as it opens up a complete arsenal of new tricks. Most people are afraid to crash hard on their first trick though. And that is exactly what happened to Nathan. So let's have a look at his video and see what he could have improved to prevent this crash. The takeoff is good, but he initiates the loop before reaching the apex of the jump. This means that the kite generates a lot more power in the loop. At the same time, he forgets to crank the bar all the way, also known as steer hard and pull your bar all the way down to keep the loop small. Due to the power of the loop, his body extends behind him and he's unable to land on his board. So keep the following in mind when you try your first loops. Initiate the loop at the highest part of the jump, also known as the apex. Pull the bar all the way in and steer hard in order to make a small loop with the kite. And last, pull in your legs and tension up your stom stomach muscles so the board stays underneath you for the landing. During the back roll there are two very important factors that contribute to lift and rotation. Those factors are the carve and your kite position. If a one of these two factors is off, most likely you have trouble getting the right height and rotation for your back roll. That's what you can see in this video from Colt where he slides out at the end of his carve. He does manage to finish the rotation, but that's mainly because he's able to get more lift from the kite by keeping it at 12 o'clock. With the carve, you try to redirect your speed by turning towards the wind. This loads your line, resulting in more lift, and if you do a very short explosive carve, it will also result in more rotational force. But when you slip out on your takeoff, this usually results in less lift and reduced rotational speed, so it will be harder to complete your rotation. But how do you make sure that you don't slip out on the carve? Especially in chop, this is done by keeping a bend in your back leg so you can absorb the chop. Next to that, you can also ride a little bit slower so you're not getting bounced off the water. You can see that Colt does a way better job on carving as there is more spray in this video, resulting in more lift and a nicer back roll. This has probably happened to you as well where you lose the board on a rotation or a jump. At this moment, it's probably time to tighten up your straps a little bit, especially if you're riding booties. But there are also other possibilities why this happens. You might have noticed that Dave doesn't really carve on this particular back roll. He tries to jump into a back roll by kicking against the water and hardly uses the carve to build up line tension and lift. This kick also makes it more likely that you lose your board. The same goes for a front roll. It's also important to carve before you try to take off from the water. After you've successfully landed the back roll, it's time to celebrate. Especially if it's your first one, which was true in the case of Carlos. But that doesn't mean that the kite goes on autopilot and your lines untwist automatically. You'll be surprised about the amount of people that crash their kite while untwisting their lines. True. I am also guilty of doing it every once in a while, but keep in mind that you can still steer your kite when your lines are twisted. In the end, they're still connected to the same knots on your kite, aren't they? You have some extra friction and it's not good to keep riding your lines twisted for an entire session, but make sure that you control your kite first and put it at a stable position before you untwist that bar. Like that, you save yourself a stressful moment where you're wondering what's left and what's right, and before you know it, your kite is in the water. This brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoy this new format, and if you would like to receive some coaching, feel free to have a look at my website to see where I'll be for my next camp or coaching sessions. Consider liking and subscribing, leave a comment if you have any questions, and I'll see you on the next one.